Hi everyone! So this August marks the seventh anniversary of my viral video, the one where the sea turtle had a straw stuck up in its nose. And I thought it might be fun to do a commented version of the video, especially because we have sea turtle week right now where the sea turtle community is highlighting all the dangers that our sea turtles are facing, including plastic pollution. And in May, the story of our turtle was also published in a children's book and so I just thought yeah let's do a commented version so you guys know what happened seven years ago on that fateful day exactly. Maybe before we start the video I'm just going to explain a little bit of the setup of the day. It was in August, the 10th of August 2015 and I was still collecting data for my PhD and we were in Guanacaste in Costa Rica, a few miles out at sea to capture couples that were just done mating and it had already been advanced in the day so we had been spending the morning sampling different couples and we had this one couple on the boat and the male actually had something funny encrusted in its nose and my colleague Dr. Nathan Robinson that was visiting that day is interested in ectobion so the little critters that live on the turtles and he decided that after we were done with our sampling to extract that object and see what it is and since I was done with my part of the work I just grabbed my camera and decided to film the entire process and so you can hear me pretty much giving a running comment behind the camera the entire video a lot of cursing as well right so yeah so here we are on the boat and nathan whipped out his swiss army knife the little plier that's attached it and started pulling on the turtles object where we had no idea at that point what it actually is right so it looked a little bit encrusted already and at that point it really looks organic and um, we first thought it's a barnacle, but while he pulled on it, Nathan was actually thinking that it might have been a worm. And he pulled, and obviously the turtle doesn't like it very much. Uh, so we have two people sitting next to her, pretty much sustaining her. And in the background, you can actually see one of the flipper tags that we had already attached. So we are able to identify him later on. And we actually did two years later, one of my oh assistants my saw him mating again in front of a different beach. And that was really neat that we had those flipper tags because we knew for sure it was him. Yeah, so now you can see more and more that it's really an elongated object and you can actually see black stripes on it as well. So that is like, that was the first time that, you know, there was like this idea of a straw come or kind of going through my mind. And if you listen really careful to what I'm saying, I even, you know, in a half sentence, try to verbalize that, man, that looks like one of those straws that we have in Germany that has the black stripes on it. Never really got to do it though. So he's definitely not happy. We are also very unsure if, you know, because we don't know what the object is, like how it's even stuck in there. I mean, I remember just that I was trying to go like through sea turtle inner anatomy, trying to figure out, okay, I mean, are we actually able to destroy anything? Um, is there a direct connection like to the brain or something? I mean, in the very beginning, we were all very lighthearted about it and joking around, you know, it might be attached to its brain stem and all of that, but that wasn't really serious. Um, so yeah so we were like okay what yeah, is it is it safe to remove it is it not safe to remove it and while we're trying we're kind of discussing that and eventually we're actually deciding to take a piece off to just kind of investigate what material it's made from but of course i think looking at it it seems so much longer than it felt on the boat in the moment while we were actually doing it um yeah, I mean, I was just holding the camera and just kind of thinking, what is it? So now one of my local research assistants, Mekdo, actually tried to remove it with his hands, but he was like wiggling it around and I was not feeling good about it. He was a little grosero, like a little... Mm. So I told him, no, no, don't do it. Please don't. That's a little bit too much. Um, 
And here we are discussing, you know, okay, how shall we proceed? So we just like pull it out, but we don't really know what it is. And so that is the moment where we're deciding, okay, you know, we really need to, we really need to figure out the material that it's made from first. And so Nathan is going to use the scissors and cuts off the piece that's already sticking out of the nose. I mean, hindsight is always 2020, of course. Um, if we would have known what we would have done, we would have definitely better tools on board, I think. Um, and of course, we might have cut it a little bit differently, so we would have a better grip later on. But hey, we had no freaking idea what we were even looking at. So in the background, what you can see, though, is Mac to actually plastic. grab the piece of plastic, well, straw? sorry, the Don't piece of what we didn't know <laughs> what it's going to be, like and bit on it, like, and we said, those, well, that's plastic. I was like, are you serious, Max? That is plastic? I mean, come on, don't tell me it's a straw. Because that was, you know, what has already been in the back of my mind the entire time that I was seeing the black stripes appearing in like my camera lens, right? And so, no, this is plastic. It's like, holy beep. Um, so what are we going to do now? Are we going to just leave it in the turtle? and let him continue his life or maybe straw. we should Don't just remove it. I mean luckily sea turtles are Keep pretty resilient and they need their, you know, their, their, like their, yeah, their nostrils or, or to or find food. Straws. I'm actually already ripping out the iodine to see if we could maybe somehow yeah. disinfect yeah, no it on the way but it's, it's like no way that I was able to put the swab in it with the item stuck in it. So we're like, you know what? We really need to remove it. Here, Nathan actually cuts it open. And yeah, it is definitely a piece of plastic. I mean, we couldn't believe it either. That was absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. Yeah, so now we're really, you know, in the dilemma. Okay, what are we going to do? We are in Costa Rica. Our research permits are not permitting us to just take an endangered animal from its natural habitat without a reason. And there is not really, you know, a rehab center close by that we could bring her to or a, vet, a specialized vet. So the next time would have been in Punta Arenas, but that meant we would have to organize how to get him there. Um, also have to get the permit of it. Also, some people were always wondering about the blood in the background. So, since we just applied a flipper tag and that turtle was moving around, that is not ideal, of course. He started to, you know, kind of bleed from the freshly applied flipper tag, which usually they don't. But it says if you get an earring and you start, you know, really harshly ripping on it, it probably starts bleeding as well. So anyway, so we kind of decided, okay, we can take him out, we can leave the thing inside of him. So the only thing we can do is, is to pretty much remove it and hope that, you know, it helps him to, you know, continue his life. And so this is kind of the next excruciating so minute, because since we have cut off the little part, it was definitely more difficult to get a grip on that piece. Again, hindsight is always 2020. We probably yeah, would have done it I mean, differently if we would have known that we would remove it and it. what we were even looking at. But I mean, that said, was not even in our wildest dreams that we think we would said, find yeah, a plastic straw like, so stuck in a turtle's nose. So yeah, now that we all have, you know, decent pliers, we probably will never ever see something like that again. But who knows? I mean, I've used my pliers already to remove hooks and other stuff from, from turtles as well. Yeah, he's not happy right now. He's very angry and tries to yeah, get away man, from us still. And now I'm sorry, my dog is going to photobomb this video. Oh, man. Yeah, so we're pulling and pulling and pulling and trying. He's not happy. The two guys that are Just holding it, him down are really hand, trying hard to, to not let him wiggle away. And then, oh yeah, in the background also what you can hear me is like my camera or the battery yeah, sign of my camera out. started flashing at me and I was just uh, hoping that I could change the batteries and so I told um, I told the one of my assistants that was also on the boat oh there we got it finally ah oh, so excruciating but it's out it is out there it is in all its gory details 
man, still can't believe that happened. But yeah, so while I was filming, the battery sign started flashing and I asked my assistant to please look in one of our equipment boxes for my spare batteries. Um, and then when Nathan pulled out the straw, in that moment, my camera literally went dead. And I had no idea if it even filmed the moment where we finally removed the straw. And when I got the batteries, the spare batteries, I noticed they weren't charged either. Bad planning on my part for sure. But so we really had to sit for two hours going back to our research station, kind of with the suspense, okay, did we actually film the last part as well or did we not? Um, and of course it was anyways a pretty gloomy, a pretty gloomy, you know, vibe on the boat because we couldn't believe that such a mundane object that we really use on a daily basis, at least a lot of us, and I think everybody of us has used it at one point, that we found it in a turtle's nose. You know, such a tiny object caused so much suffering. And then when we finally got home, of course, the first thing was I put the SD card into my computer to check if it filmed, and yes, it did. I mean, I had filmed actually a lot more, but well, at least it got the moment where the straw was out. It didn't get the other part where we like disinfected and then released the turtle. But yeah, that was it. I mean, seven years ago also, our like cell phone technology wasn't there yet. Nowadays, I would probably just whipped out my phone and would have filmed the whole thing. But yeah, that's the story of the turtle and the straw. And of course, once we uploaded it, it just kind of totally went crazy. So it went viral, it definitely started a movement and helped to raise a lot of awareness about what harm single-use plastics can do to marine life.